Hello. Oh, nice. See, there's supposed to be two more stooges to finish it. <laughs> okay, shoot. <laughs> I yeah, I wondered because it almost had the Lionel Richie note. Yeah. And I'm an idiot because I don't say hello. I say I say hey. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I say. Hey. Japan, episode 81. Of Jim uh, has the Jim mention. can't remember how the show works. Of Alex analyzes <laughs> Billy Joel lyrics. Jim has dementia. <laughs> it was bound to happen. Episode 81. Wow. So I'm going to say this. I said this two seconds ago before we recorded. This is a little behind the scenes, but Alex can wear a hat. Look at that hat. Wear a hat. Um, and as I said, thank God. Yeah, you look charming with a hat. I don't look charming with a hat. Here's maybe this could be your problem. I don't know what kind of hat you do wear when you do wear one, but what I figured out is you. Uh, guys who wear primary color baseball caps, uh, you have to be like 35 or younger. And then once you're 40 plus, it has to be some kind of earth tone. See, that's the, a good good advice for somebody who ever looked good in a hat. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll tell you a hat story. You want to hear a hat story? Yeah, dog. That's what I come here for. Yeah, that's right. One years ago, I was on the road with my wife and we passed the truck stop and in the truck stop, you know how in truck stops they sell nonsense that you don't know who would stop and buy this here. Sure. And the answer is me in my twenties. Yeah. And there was a hat there and it was an Indiana Jones hat. Oh, great. <laughs> and I was like an Indiana Jones. Well, I'm going to look great in an Indiana Jones hat. So, <laughs> After all, he does. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's just... Oh. Be a one-for-one so, one translation. So I put the damn thing on and, and I looked in a mirror and I swear to God, and I'm going to use a word that's it's antiquated, but it's the only right word to use. I looked retarded. <laughs> and sometimes that's the word, by the way. I'm sorry, but that's what I look... I didn't look mentally challenged. I didn't look like that. I am... <laughs> I am, but I didn't look that way. Gotcha. And wow. every hat I wear, I look like, I look like today's the day when, you know, the Make-A-Wish Foundation takes me to Disneyland. <laughs> every hat I, I don't wear, there's no hat that we're, it's my melon, this thing up here. You do have the melon. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, bet I can you win. If they actually made baseball caps that looked like the way Charles Schultz drew them, I could wear that baseball cap, <laughs> given my Charlie Brown-esque skull. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen the ball cap that just has the, the hair squiggle. <laughs> yeah. really great. And I mean, good grief. Right. It's Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> I, I also wanted to mention, because there's nowhere else to mention this. How sad is it? But also what a good life. The lovely uh, Tina Turner passed away. Ah, uh, yes. What a great fucking sad. thing. Way to kill it. Yeah. Lived to a nice ripe old age. Kicked ass. And all the idiots who gave her grief have long since died. Yep. You know, the husband, managers, there's a lot of people who gave her grief. And she's just fucking still kicking ass and taking names. She was touring as recently as a few years ago. Yep. Uh, living well is the best revenge. And she very much embodied that. Yeah. She's like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to do even better. Yeah. And there's this thing they do with old ladies, particularly like ladies that used to be icons. And... They'll, they've done it with a lot of people Well, they'll say, and you know, even at 75, she was still sexy. And most <laughs> of the time they weren't. Tina right. Turner was pretty damned attractive the whole time, mainly because she was, first, she was attractive. But also, yep. just what a fiery personality and what a fucking legend. 
Legend. Yeah, uh, for sure, if I'd have had a shot, I'd have taken my shot at any <laughs> age the Tina Turner. But at any age, she would have looked at me and went, no. <laughs> oh, you, you poor retarded man. Yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> why are you wearing that hat? <laughs> the hat would nail it. What, do you think I'm an Indiana Jones fan? Well, I am retarded. <laughs> but how sad. And uh, But also how not sad the way that is, how you have to process the part after they die, you're like, well, it's sad. And you're like, well, 80s. Not that. 80s. Yeah. You make it to 80. Yeah. That's fair. It's sad yeah. in the sense, but it, it's sad only if you think that it's sad that that's how it works. And you can think that's sad. Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately it. Because it, you know, it's never, it does happen to every single person. Yeah. So we're, we can't keep being shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so if it happens to every single person, then the standard has to be, well, how long and how healthy yep. and how productive was the run? Indeed. If that's the case. That's not sad at all. That's good job. Yeah, Whitney Houston, sad. Tina Turner, not so sad. They also do this thing where they're like, oh, it's sad uh, because we won't have their music anymore or whatever. There won't be. And I was like, she's not, she wasn't going to make any more albums. Yeah. And you weren't <laughs> going to listen if she did. You weren't going to listen. You haven't. How many albums behind are you on Paul McCartney, a Beatle? Yeah. And some of those songs aren't bad. Some of those songs aren't bad, but I'm not rushing out. No. The new McCartney is out. Yeah, McCartney. He actually did make come in. Well, you don't need to, you don't need to talk. You don't need to talk right now, Chandler. Come, <laughs> come here. Come here. I don't need that. Come here. You're causing trouble. Don't do that. We have a new dog. Oh, a new dog. We have three dogs now. Yeah. Wowza. Because uh the place just uh, almost there were parts of it that didn't smell. So oh <laughs> so you sought further coverage yeah exactly now now we have an excuse for every corner that doesn't smell right <laughs> he's oh. a very sweet boy we're babysitting for months now we're gonna babysit oh. for months for this little guy oh great yeah but yeah she passed away and there's a you know that's a thing and it happened and oh well <laughs> so be it so this crazy ass song i picked dude not only is it unreleased the only yep. version I could find to listen to was a live version. Same for you, probably. For me. And that's kind of wild. Um, it's not only on the re-release of Piano Man, although I find it funny that it's on that, that it's on the Legacy Edition of Piano Man. It's also on, I believe, My Lives. Uh-huh. That one that's got the drawing of Billy Joel. Yeah, the very weird drawing. Yeah. The, was was that Christy Brinkley drew that or something? Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me, although it even looks a little rudimentary for her. It it is, yeah. It's I don't know. It's I guess but if one of his kids drew it, that'd be amazing. Then yeah. fine. But cause but I bet it's somebody who thinks they're an artist. Yeah. Billy Joel in real life. Yawning, by the way. Uh, pardon my yawning. I napped until eight minutes before showtime. <laughs> I'm still loopy. Have you ever done that, by the way, before performing live somewhere? No, not that I recall. I haven't performed live somewhere in so long. Yeah. I couldn't answer that honestly, but I don't think so. I have inadvertently, and it's rough. I can't imagine. Yeah. Particularly for stand-up. I bet it's rough for anything. I'm sure it's rough for theater, too. But at sure. least in theater, you have a shot that maybe your entrance isn't right away. And you can kind of go, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, we got to get this together. But like with stand-up, where you're like, oh, all right, let's be in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let me uh, react to the crowd. Uh, lightning speed. Anybody here have a birthday? <laughs> this I, guy knows what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> hey, you guys like coffee, right? How funny would it be if I drank a coffee right now? 
<laughs> Somebody bring me a coffee. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll watch. Oh, and I've done it once or twice for whatever dumb reason. And the other thing I've done is been on the road and there was no good food available. And the only food available was like pizza. Oh, I had to eat something. And I was like, yeah, let's carve up before I get on stage. This is going to be good. <laughs> and it's not. It is not. Oh. I have a tenuous grasp on whatever it is that works about me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so i listened to this fucking thing it's called josephine josephine another it, country in his list of weird lady names yes and it is i don't think intentionally so but it's a jerry lee lewis song yes it is and i, I think, think maybe to intentionally like huh i think maybe intentionally maybe you think yeah maybe i'm like well Billy's a piano man, I've heard. And <laughs> oh, the fact that he's doing something like another piano guy. By the way, Jerry Lee Lewis, if he had gotten to the name first, he could have had it. Oh, yeah. Because if, if back in the 50s, they're like, here he comes, the piano man. Jerry, you would have bought that. Yeah, you would have bought that. But he had another nickname. Which was? Killer. Killer, that's right. I was gonna say cousin fucker. <laughs> it's interesting that they named him after a different crime that he didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> that is a crime he definitely did. Oh uh, uh, man, talk about a different time because I remember seeing an interview with Jerry Lee Lewis, old timey interview, where yeah. he's with his lady love, who is at the time, I believe, a child. And uh He's got his arm around her like this. And yeah. Her neck fits there <laughs> pretty comfortably. Because, uh -huh. you know, it's a smaller neck, the way kids' necks oh, yeah. are smaller than adult necks. <laughs> He's just kind of leaning on her like she's a microphone stand, talking to the press. Yeah. And they don't rush the stage. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. He's not but, suddenly arrested. Yeah, he does not. Nice questions. There, it does impact his career, which is good. But it, yeah, it does. But it's slowly. Takes, yeah, like slowly and not everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Elvis moves in and goes. Well, I'll keep my child bride on the down low. <laughs> Smart people learn, yeah, and they. Grow. Did Look, you ever see the movie Great Balls of Fire? Yes. The great Dennis Quaid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the best. It's so bad and good. <laughs> Him screaming, I shine like gold when I play that piano. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. And what was it? Was there's a scene where Elvis says something to him, right? Like, come and take it or something. Yeah. And the implication was he could have. Yeah. Maybe he could have. I kind of don't think so. I think Elvis was in his own place. Yeah. Elvis, yeah. It was a whole different game. I feel like Jerry Lee Lewis amounted to a novelty act. Yeah. In a lot of ways with his style of piano playing. And he wasn't a great singer. No. <laughs> it's fine. And he was, he probably would have, you know, he was more talented than the big bopper. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I would tell you my idea for because you had the Richie Valens, right? Yep. He had a, yep. a movie. You had the Buddy Holly had a movie. Uh, of course, Jerry Lee Lewis. I had an idea for a Big Bopper movie. <laughs> and uh, it was the, the Big Bopper story, the story of one song. <laughs> right. And the entire movie, what I want is you tell a very dramatic story up until he gets on the airplane. But the entire soundtrack is the one song. <laughs> the one song. I wanted to do a movie about uh, the pilot. Oh. <laughs> the pilot of that plane who never gets a mention, never gets a shout out. Right. And all this, the hand wringing about that plane crash. Like, yeah. He didn't even have a song, the poor guy. Oh, how fun would the movie be? What you do is you 
you start on him at the beginning of his day. He's drinking his little cup of coffee. He's talking about how he's got a flight to take, yep. whoever. And the end is the reveal of what flight it is. Hey, guys. <laughs> Pretty great. <laughs> He's, I imagine he's like taking guitar lessons because he really likes this new rock and roll craze. Right. He's like, I'm trying to get good enough to write one song. Yeah. <laughs> almost got it. I uh, just have to do a couple more flights. Yeah. And before they take off, he goes, oh, the weather's not great. You know what? We should take off before it gets even worse. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's the, like he's not a, not the brightest. I'm not very good at being a pilot. <laughs> so, Josephine is a longer song than it should be. There's a lot of piano. For damn sure. Because there's not very many lyrics. But I enjoy the piano playing. It's interesting that it's unreleased. I think it could have been released. Yeah, I don't know if it could have been released on Piano Man. Like it would have jumped out. Yeah. In a weird way. But it could have been released on something considering the other nonsense we've talked about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't have been the biggest miscalculation. Hey, you know what? It would have fit on an innocent man if you if yeah. he needed it. Absolutely. There's your era specific yep. uh, something different. Uh non-Frankie Valley. Yeah. Cause he, you know, he did, you know. Of not just Frankie Valley on that album, right? There's a variety of things he's trying to pull off. Yeah, he took a run at Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And that's such a bar song, too. The other thing is, it occurred to me that that song would be wonderful in a dingy bar by some idiot you didn't know. And you were like, oh, this is pretty good. Yeah. Because your expectations would be low and the beers would be, you know, $3. Yeah. Yeah. And you get when you can see somebody playing the piano like that, it's always a different thing than just yeah. hearing it. That's I love it. that. I love watching a fucking lunatic playing piano. It's great. Okay. And it's the great thing about seeing uh, Billy Joel in concert. They're very good about putting a camera right over the keyboard. Yeah. The Jumbotron, so you can see his little fat hands. <laughs> What's that old timey music from the 30s or 40s that's real jumpy? Uh, ragtime. Ragtime. I love ragtime music. I don't necessarily ever enjoy listening to, except watching a piano player play ragtime live, where their hands go like this and they look like puppets. Yep. And they look like, like they're really just making it up. Yeah. And you're like, I don't, is he hitting the piano? And the music is fucking magic at that point. Yeah. It, it pops off. I think, oddly enough, that we never realized until we started the show that you and I have a similar fondness for piano players watching them. Yeah, it's the best. You know what one of my favorite things to watch is fake piano playing in a play when they work really hard at it. Yeah. They fool me. I love that. It's really great. Um, it's very funny because it, can, it used to come up a lot on SNL when someone would be fake piano playing in a sketch um and you know for a lot of the performers it became a fun thing to like get it wrong on purpose right or to, like, lift your hands before the music stopped <laughs> yeah, it's a good fun little bit but i always appreciated when someone would really try to get it right yeah and not make that make that the bit yes like, no i this part is not the joke um, yeah like when, Bill Peter was good about it. Like he was a real technician, like the technician comedians. I like that a lot. Do you remember when you were in college and you went to see Merrily We Roll a lot? Because I know you went to see that. Absolutely. Yes, I did. Yeah, so did I. Now, the guy who played the lead was his name Brett. Oh, man. I couldn't be sure. I believe his name was Brett. He was very handsome. He was a very charming theater fella. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I hope he's still with us. I know that one of the leads, and because there's two co-leads who played the main guy, and one of them has passed on, and I don't know which. But yeah. but those both wonderfully talented men. There's a scene where he plays piano, 
but we know he's not playing piano because it's not a piano. It's a black box theater. It's that, it's that set where they move the boxes around to change the set. Right. So they create the piano with something that was chairs a second ago. Yeah. And I was mesmerized at how much I believed he was playing piano. Oh, great. I wonder if he really, he probably really knew how to play piano. Oh, that'd be neat. Yeah, that'd be the funny trick, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah. Like, I could actually play it. And like, no, no. Yeah, they won't. This, it won't sound right also we're, that we're doing taped music. So he was just over there. And I love when the shoulder does, the, you know, you get the shoulder is the, on the shoulder. Moves. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the shoulder I, is one of the keys. Yeah, I just love when somebody understands the shoulder is part of the thing. And then <laughs> just going like that. <laughs> like an actual Muppet. Yeah, yeah, that was... Yeah, I'm, and you are damn right. When I saw Billy Joel live, I got to see exactly what you've been talking about for years, which is those fat, beautiful, <laughs> moving, you know, piano mover hands. Yep. Just creating absolute oh, wizardry. Wizardry at 74. Yeah, dude. By the way, I think we missed his birthday. It was May 9th. Ah, shoot. <laughs> the young man turned 74. My uh, my sister, uh, I don't know, did I tell you my sister sent me a gift for her birthday? Oh, yeah, you said that was her practice. Yeah. And what did she give you? She gave me, oh, I finally got it. And uh, it came in the mail. It was a package of Russian tea. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Now, do you know what Russian tea is? No, is it not just tea? It is not. It's It's candy. It's, oh. it's a tea it's a tea but it's now this is why she gave me russian tea because one of my i have two memories from when i was a toddler that are my oldest memories that i like i remember when i was less than one dropping a barbell on my toe and i can remember the toe being open whoa yeah and because my father was in charge of watching me the one day <laughs> gotcha <laughs> And then my other memory is because there's so many memories attached to smell is this tea in a, in a container with, and it has red hots in it. That'll tell you what a fancy tea is. Uh, and, right. but it's got such strong smell and I always loved it very much. And I could never, I was like, I don't know what that was. And I happened to mention it to my sister. She said, Oh, that's Russian tea. That's something huh. mom would make us. And it's, and it's not good for you. Okay, fair enough. But it's fantastic. And she's like, yeah. And um, I'm going to drink it and it's going to be great. And I'm going to spike my blood sugar and it's going to be great. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, that is my lovely sister because she loves me. So for reasons, uh, that's really, yeah, what a sweet and thoughtful gift. Yeah, my, uh, my sister is about the best. I realized whatever problems I had with my parents were mitigated by the fact that all my siblings are good people. Uh, yeah. What a fucking delight. And no, uh, I'm yeah. jealous, but I'm going to swallow it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if it helps, my father once in a while took a swing at me. So it all balances out. You know, that does help. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> so so the song stuff. is Josephine. Josephine. And I like it. I, I also do. My opinion was sort of, I played it with Sue, our producer in the room, and she hated it so viscerally <laughs> that I couldn't even really listen to it. She immediately started complaining about it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what were her thoughts? I think she thought, well, I, the version we have to listen to was very shaggy. Yeah. To begin with. But I think she just hated that it was like Jerry Lee Lewis style. And he kept saying Josephine over and over again. <laughs> Very basic complaints. Uh, not wrong in any case. Sure. Um, but it was like, I'm trying to listen to it. Let me stop hating it. Wait till it's over. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, but yeah, it was very funny. <laughs> but you you yourself you didn't hate it you liked I didn't it. hate it I didn't hate it I mean like you said I always like that kind of piano 
yeah that's good that's almost enough for me to enjoy it um it felt like i don't think he's ever played piano quite like that yeah that's kind of neat right yeah i don't know what you call it when you just wipe your hand back and forth on the keyboard <laughs> yeah we haven't yeah. seen that move from him very much it's old time rock and roll it's a rock and roll piano it's probably yeah. it feels like piano from when rock and roll first emerged yeah it's you know combined with it's rock and roll when it was a was truly still just evolving from a hybrid of blues and country and whatever other influences popped up like bluegrass yeah. really yeah i'm sure you're right yeah and that might be also part of why i liked it too because i kind of like that sort of music i I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, but I bet he would. I'm sure he's a student of like any piano from early rock and roll. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably over it and try attempted everything he's heard. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I really it, to me it does sound like he was like, oh, I'm gonna be uh, Jerry Lee Lewis for one song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, luckily he didn't deep, dive deep and just have sex with a cousin. As far as we know. As far as we know. <laughs> not, not frowned upon on Long Island, I would think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Until very recently. <laughs> oh, uh, all this dog's being so sweet. Yeah, you just, as long as you just be quiet, I think we're okay. Say the dog's name again. This is Chandler. Chandler. Yeah. And I don't know if it's after Chandler Bing or not. Well, he doesn't like to be picked up. So you'll have to imagine him. <laughs> that, that's very Chandler Bing. Yeah. <laughs> Could, I be, Could I be any more pain pills? That's my Chandler Bing. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'll start. <laughs> you start. Didn't you know what I mean when I said I love you, Josephine? I really kind of actually like the rhythm of that. Yeah, yeah, Josephine, nothing I say does justice to you or lights up the way, the day the way that you do, Josephine. Now, I like that lyric. That's very nice. I like that he's saying that all the, just very quickly, whatever I say, the flowery language doesn't match what you are, Josephine. It's just yeah. my ugly, dumb little attempt but or lights up the day the way you do i like that little rhyme and the rhythm of it just kind of pops for the song yeah it's kind of nice uh surprising humility yeah it always is surprising <laughs> maybe that's why he's like no th no this is unreleased <laughs> yeah, this doesn't sound like me i'm better than josephine never mind <laughs> it would be great if at the end you could hear him say like unreli done. unreleased unreleased <laughs> As the piano is fading out. Why, really... why did we bother to record it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, Josephine, you know, it's a weird name. Yeah. Let's have a history of odd old lady names. <laughs> <laughs> Songs. Uh, but for the purposes, obviously it was chosen just to rhyme with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And to have three syllables. Yeah. It really does the job when it comes to those two things. Yep. I I appreciate that. When I, I don't you know what I mean when I said I love you, Josephine. I love I like I like for a change too that this is not a hamstrung rhyme. That just kind of has a good rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not uh it doesn't trip over itself. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Right there. Very simple. I mean, how simple is it? Well. That's the first part already done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll go. Yes. Like a beautiful queen, you deserve a crown, my Josephine. Yeah, Joseph. Actually, Josephine does sound like a good queen name. Yeah, Queen Josephine. That would work. Good royal royal name. Yeah. Yeah, Josephine. Well, I pick up the phone and give you a call. You come around with your sneakers and all. Josephine. That line is weird as hell, and I like it with sneakers. 
you come around with your sneakers and all. She's uh she ain't no highfalutin city gal. Yeah, she's a bit of a tomboy, I guess. I guess. I mean, it depends on whether this is the 70s when he's writing and performing this or the 50s from which it was cribbed. Sock hop. Um, I don't know which era yeah. women are more likely to be wearing sneakers. Probably the 70s? I don't know. When did the sneaker craze kick off? Probably the 80s, really. I th- Boy, I think so. I re- So I, here's what I remember about the 80s as far as styles at my high school. It was an unfortunate era of super baggy clothes. Yeah. And so there'd be girls would just be wearing, you know, tents and... <laughs> now, I know people complain about girls showing too much, but there's something sure. to be said for wearing something that at least tells you there's a person in there. <laughs> yeah, it was a little like clown clothes. Yeah. Um, just baggy silks. <laughs> I remember this girl. Primary that, colors. I remember this girl that I liked wearing this shirt that was giant and also stripes. Yeah. And it looked, well, it was fine, I guess. Like a dirigible. Yeah. I mean, I was wearing a Ghostbusters shirt, so I have no way or judgment to make, but... Oh, no. What we wore was awful and criminal. Yeah. I remember a lot of OP shorts, <laughs> a lot of corduroy. Yeah. And uh, the girl I liked in high school wore penny loafers because uh, she was a rich kid. <laughs> uh, and I thought that was fucking cool as hell. I think that still is pretty cool that she did that. It's still pretty cool. Like yeah. that held up nicely for her. She sure. wore a lot of uh, penny loafers and polo shirts. Okay. So we two different sides of the tracks. So she she dressed gender neutral, I guess you would say. And a gender neutral and preppy. Yeah. And, and uh, now she's a lawyer in DC. So Damn. it all tracks. Yeah, so she's doing all right. She was true to herself. I don't know how Josephine's doing wearing her dumb sneakers. <laughs> but she's got a song. So yeah, so I because my initial thought was she's a tomboy or something. And I've dated girls like that too, but maybe that's not what it was. And maybe you're right. Maybe it's the era thing, like the pink ladies. <laughs> right. Although I think they wore saddle shoes. Is that right? Okay, yeah, you're probably right. Not they started as their official uniform when they had the sweaters. Yeah, I remember Sandy, Sandy, Sandra D wore the ten, tennis shoes, but they were that's because she was a good girl, I think. Right, and then she had the stilettos. Yeah, that's right. When she fixed herself, when she fixed herself. She went out. She invented spandex <laughs> <laughs> and wore it to school. <laughs> Uh, well, really... well sit right back suppose I went away ah uh, honey would your love turn sour and moldy green maybe this is why you cut it because he couldn't figure out that that's not a good lyric it's not uh, a good lyric at all ah uh, honey would your love turn sour and moldy green would I take from you the light of day would I make you sad my Josephine oh so now he's wondering Am I this for you? Right. And the answer is no, you're not. Oh, I'm a little troll. <laughs> and I know it. This uh, lyrically, the way it's structured, made me think of the Big Bopper. Yeah. A lot of, oh, honey. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it's very funny in, I think it's La Bamba. Um, there is the scene where uh, La Bamba is talking to Buddy Holly. Uh, and the Big Bopper walks in and he the first thing he does is he says, well, hello, baby. That's right. So you know who he is. Because that's literally all anybody will know and can know about him. I remember years ago seeing some interview with his son. 
yeah. Son of the Big Bopper, which, by the way, what a great horror film. Have you seen Son of the Big Bopper? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, black and white, they colorized it. Yeah, that's right. Ruined it. Uh, can you guess what Son of the Big Bopper was doing at that time? Um, like uh, uh, he was in a cover band. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He was on tour as this. As the, the poster that said the Big Bopper and then Son of in tiny font. <laughs> uh, you hear him and he goes, and he's, it would be great if you saw him. He's got kind of a high voice. Hello, baby. Like, <laughs> right? Oh, he's, he's taking flying lessons. Well, you know, this is me, the Big Bopper speaking. He's got a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. He might be gay. Huh. <laughs> All right. This is not what I remember from my childhood, but okay. Hey, hello, girls. <laughs> uh, uh, would you uh, turn sour and moldy green? The moldy green thing is kind of funny. I'm like, it's why? such a bad miscalculation. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean by that. That's a, too evocative, sir. Yeah. Would your love turn sour? That doesn't make sense. And here's the other part that doesn't... I don't get it. So are you... I really am finding, finding this so inscrutable. Are you saying that <laughs> if I went away, are you, are you juxtaposing, would you stop loving me? Or would you be sad? Is it two different thoughts? I guess that would almost make sense. Yeah, I think it's, it's just, uh, if I went away, would you stop loving me? Yeah. Yeah. Would I take from you the light of day? Yeah. Um, would I make you sad? Well, yes. That's a stupid question, I think, is the heart of the problem here. Yeah. Yeah, if you went away, that would not be good. Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> <laughs> Put on this hat. I want to check. <laughs> oh, the hat test. That's what they, do it. They, they still do it in school. Yeah, they do. They'll you'll come in. The guy seems perfectly smart. They put a hat on. They're like, nope, different class for you. Sorry. All right. You go home at noon. <laughs> <You're cool. laughs> He's like, where? How can I get that hat to fit on me? <laughs> oh Lord. All right. This uh, the, sort of, the sorting hat. That's right. <laughs> um, less benign yeah less magical sorting hat less magical <laughs> the cut to the chase sorting hat oh that's pretty great oh what house are you your parents house <laughs> yeah you're going bud and you'll be in remedial <laughs> I, feel, I like that we got one angry comment last week and now we're angling for them Yep, because I just I live for him now. <laughs> this is how uh, people uh, go alt right. <laughs> From us, wow! Addicted to angry comments and start believing they're true. That's yeah, that, that's an actual problem. Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, Saying more and more horrifying things. Yeah, then you start to believe them. Yeah. Well, no. let's that's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you arrived on the scene. You made me glad I'm alive, my Josephine. Yeah, Josephine. <laughs> well, nothing I say does justice to you. Lights up the day the way that you do, Josephine. I, I like it. It's a little bit of nothing right there. It is. But can I, I want to go back real quick to the previous lyric, which we didn't mention because because it's something you love i just occurred to me that the first line is well <laughs> yeah well said right back you arrived on the scene and what you made me glad i'm alive it's a nothing but you're right there's it's also there's nothing wrong with it which is fine the moldy line is garbage but everything else is fine Moldy line is garbage. It's also the kind of instrumental stuff that sort of precludes <laughs> any complexity. 
Yeah. In lyrics, it would be a little weird if it was a, a real deconstructed take on uh, European nihilism or something. Right. Yeah. Just keep it simple and make it rhyme a lot, bud. Yep. There's uh you probably know the answer to this trivia question, but and then also trivia is not my thing. But Billy Joel writes the music first for pretty much all his songs. Right. Only one, and you know the one, right? Where he did I, the one first. I am not remembering. Well, uh it's the one with the most lyrics. Is that Summer Highland Falls? We didn't start the fire. Oh, we didn't start. Yeah, how could you? Yeah, and and he said, and and he said, and he said of it, he's and I don't know if he's insulting the song or not, but he just said, "There's only one time where I wrote the lyrics first, and you can tell." <laughs> really, that's an insult to the song. That's pretty great. Or it's just an observation. I figure you can tell, but I I feel like it's a Billy Joel self-effacing. Damn, it's hard not to like Billy Joel because. There's nothing mean we've ever said that's worse than things he said of himself. <laughs> it's so true. And that's why you love a guy. You love a guy who does that. Yeah, man. He uh and he's not like cloying about it. No, he's if just he thinks real something enough. great, he'll say it's great. Yep. Um but yeah, it I told you before, but it's very funny when he played Los Angelinos. <laughs> And he said, oh, this is off, uh, what was it? Uh, Street Life Serenade. Uh, and somebody went, woo! And he just pointed at him. And he's like, you don't have that album. <laughs> That's pretty, yeah. really funny. Yeah, I, that last little lyric is good. You know, it, it doesn't need any more lyrics. There's, not, there's nothing else. But there also, I don't feel like it needs to be. I agree. It feels like. You know, sometimes when, like, uh, a water cracker is like this. <laughs> you take a water cracker and you put a big hunk of brie on it. Yep. And there's not a lot to the water cracker. There shouldn't be because it would interfere. It's just there for a different texture. Yep. Just to deliver something. And that's yeah. what the song is. It's really a delivery system for the sound of the way he sings. And yep. I will um I will add to your cracker analogy. <laughs> Sometimes you'll go to a party and they'll have like a cheese plate and the crackers will be like, oh, rosemary and olive oil, and they'll have weird seeds on them and stuff. Yeah. Like I'm losing my cheese. I'm all I'm getting is this complicated cracker. Yeah. And it's not you're not the star here, cracker. Yep. How many times have I been told that? <laughs> More than <laughs> I'm sure both of us Arizona <laughs> idiots, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And and what, here, up, cracker. what do you end up doing? You ended up eating the cheese. You ended up trying not yeah. to have anybody see that you took a hunk of brie and shoved it in your mouth because you're like, I'm just not and then this garbage. You pay for it later. Oh, yeah. That's a good. I'll pay for that every time. I will. There should be a cutoff age for Brie, though. I, uh, I, like, I really, yeah. I realized recently, too, as far as Brie goes, apparently I don't know how to eat it. Yeah. Because I, I was with somebody who was spreading a nice thin layer of Brie on, on a cracker. I was like, well, that's not what I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. Like, yeah. I just, just, just jam it in there. Giant hunk. I do like cheddar. It's just a big fat hunk. Yep. And, I'm with you. Oh, I love it. It is very good, but you're right. There is a there is a price to be paid later in the day. Yeah, man. And if you're in your fifties, it ain't much later in the day either. It's no. Oh, it's sometimes as you're finishing the cracker, <laughs> you're like, oh, gonna, I'll be back. You say. <laughs> you guys watch this cracker while i'm gone that was not a terrible song i'm glad i picked it it's funny that it's unreleased there's so uh, many worse songs you could have unreleased yeah that's true i, I wouldn't be sad if this came up in the rotation yeah i guess it's a timing thing why a thing doesn't get 
does it become unreleased? Because that French song could have been unreleased. Yep. Um, and should have been. Yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, I wonder how much an artist is in charge of that. And I mean, I think him, by the time he had his fourth or fifth album, could do whatever he wanted. But in general. Yeah. How much do they get to be in charge? Probably less than ever these days. Indeed. Also, here's a question for you. Do you think he has a lot of unreleased stuff? I'll bet he does. Um, and probably buries it <laughs> yeah. as deep as he can. You, uh, you know, the legendary unreleased catalog of Prince is just supposed to be just hours and hours of stuff. Yeah. And it's a match. It does seem like he is, uh, ridiculously productive. He has unreleased movies. <laughs> He did a thing because uh, Kevin Smith tells a story about a film they made. Wow. And Kevin Smith spent time with him. They shot things. And then that was it. Prince just had it. Hmm. I don't know why that exists. Um, do you remember the Onion article about Prince's unreleased catalog? Because it's relevant to our podcast. I don't. The Onion released an article. Um, uh, print, uh, they finally opened Prince's vault. Nothing but Billy Joel covers. <laughs> oh, truly great. Yeah. It can't be that many. I mean, the Beatles had a bunch of unreleased stuff. And then the more you listen to it, the more you're like, oh, yeah. Well, of course, don't release that. <laughs> I think that's mostly why things get unreleased. There's very, but the legend is that Prince, there's a, all this amazing stuff, and there might be. There's apparently an album that's a, basically a Purple Rain 2 in the oh, sense wow. that it was 80s Prince, that kind of music. Wow. That And if that's true, I want that. Yeah, I want to have that. Give me that album because as much as I love all Prince, there that's my favorite Prince is like 1999, Purple Rain, um, the one before it, uh, Dirty Mind or whatever that one was. <laughs> I loved all that Prince. Oh, that album. was the best. Yeah. Then there was Experimental Prince and I was like, no, I'm not smart enough. Don't do this, Prince. And he was on SNL after I left or shortly before. It was the second time he was on while I was there. That's what it was. And it was experimental times when he had the sunglasses with the third eye. Right. He played some song that was like nine minutes long and had all kinds of visual effects and stuff. And it was just like, oh, man. Yeah. Take me back to I Would Die For You. Right. That era is so damn good. The oh, end of 1999, I heard, finally heard the, I hadn't heard the album version in a long time. I always hear the radio edit. And the album version of 1999 goes on forever, which is, I like. And then at the end, it has all these like little phrases. And one of them at the end is, Mommy, why does everybody have a bomb? <laughs> Mommy, why does everybody have a bomb? <laughs> you know yeah speaking out about war freaking out about war yeah you right. know making his political statement <laughs> <laughs> all right well, like friends back when he talked about vaginas and peace yeah man and rock and roll he was like playing rock and roll yeah but he was so good at it it didn't even sound like rock and roll <laughs> he definitely did like he did he's like the funk um sting he was great in his when he wasn't doing too much jazzy bullshit yeah yeah too much uh like time alone or too many compliments or something too many yeses too many, too many yeses. yeses like uh the comedic version of that of course is mel brooks yeah 
Mo Brooks is a genius. I, I will say it forever. He was a comedic genius. But yes. Mel Brooks needs a no. <laughs> we all do. Most of us yeah. get plenty. Yes. <laughs> Once you stop getting it. Once you stop getting it. Yep. And that's why every billionaire turns into an idiot. Yeah. Who thinks they can. They are the oh, benign idiots. Yeah. Benign idiot or dangerous idiot, but they're all idiots. Yep. But yeah, you no know is important because that's why you're, yeah. But the other thing with Mel Brooks was he was much better off when he was young and scared. Yep. And trying to prove something. And then he made a million dollars and married the woman of his dreams and great. And just everything after that was just him recycling old jokes. So, yeah, just trying to get back home to his uh, foxy wife. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy did right. That guy did right. <laughs> so good. God bless. Now, and who deserves it like that? No, yeah, he's a, he's a funny dude. So, you, there you go. Oh, oh. Do you know who that is? That's, uh, it's very small on my screen. It looks like Christy Brinkley. <laughs> uh, it is not Christy Brinkley. She is famous. Um, I think if you look for a second, you'll, she's very quirky. She's very much known for uh, smiling like that a lot. She's very quirky. Imagine her in a fun hat. <laughs> Diane Keaton? That's right. Wow. And what is she doing? Well, I've been watching you waltz all night, Diane. You nailed it. Yeah, man. Nice job. Wow. Now, I want to tell you how happy I was that I came up with this clue. Because I thought that would be a fun clue uh and it went and it, by the way what's the name of the song for so people know wait what oh uh what is the name of the song is that sleeping with the television on that's it sleeping with the television on so i thought i want to do sleeping with the television on i was like oh i'll find a famous diane hopefully she's dancing and that'll be a simple clue when i found this and i thought well what an adorable picture it is really great and then you search out Diane Keaton dancing and a certain clip from TV comes up and I go, oh, I didn't even know this existed. And it's so silly. It's Diane Keaton dancing to Flowers by <laughs> Miley Cyrus. What? And it's this thing that went viral recently. Wow. Because she just loves that jam. She danced to it. Somebody saw her and posted a, and no one was making fun of her, which was neat. That's fantastic. They were all just like, look at this lovely lady that we all like. Huh. Son of a bitch. And how, how perfect is that for Mr. Jim Bruce? I was like, damn, how, that's great. She's dancing to flowers. Wow. She made for you. Try to find a picture of Diane Keaton not being pleasant not yeah. being kind yeah. not being affable and easygoing what what a great fucking lady it's a great fucking lady there's a lady at, at, at she is timeless in this in the in the best way she's just a woman she's a little bit like um oh now i'm blanking on her name she's considered the greatest actress ever meryl streep meryl streep She's a little like Meryl Streep in what you go, like she's wickedly talented. And then you hear her talk and you're like, well, oh, apparently she doesn't know she's wickedly talented. That's nice. Uh -huh. And if she does, she's not going to smack you in the face with it because she's good at playing the game. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, the yeses haven't hurt her. Yep. She, yes. Gosh, gosh, my God. What a, yes, proof. Yeah. Fucking flawless. You flawless what you just did. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the yeses haven't heard it because she's just a lovely person. Uh, we said this off the air, but then you sort of brought it up. I want to say this really quick. We get feedback. Yes, we do. And we get comments sometimes, and not a lot, but we get some. And it's nice that anybody is listening. And if we make you mad, you don't have to delete your comment. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. You can We'd be like to study them. And we might not change anything. In fact, we probably won't. Yeah. Or it'll get worse. 
Yeah, <laughs> yes. Life's changed for the worse. But you're not wrong for letting us know something made you mad. There was a nice lady. Well, I don't know if she's nice. She could be awful. But I'm assuming you're nice. She might be nice. Who thought we were calling out alternative lifestyles. I don't. Oh. We were, I couldn't find anything in the episode where we were doing that. And I hope you're still. I hope you still watch the show. But I couldn't find anything where we were. I think all I was saying is that as an old man, I enjoy when the quiet moments are good. That's really all I was saying. Right. I think we might have just been talking about our wives and not mentioning, oh, some people don't have wives. Yeah. No, but I think people know that. That's why I didn't mention it. Yeah, I think people do know that. Yeah. Like you have to keep going. Like sometimes people are gay. Everyone knows. Yeah. Even the people who aren't very happy about that. Yeah. And it seemed, yeah, it seemed to me that the non traditional relationship she was referring to was possibly a little looser relationship sexually. Okay, sure. God bless you if that's what you're enjoying, because I have enjoyed that at some point points in my life too. And it, it's fantastic. Great. God bless you. Yeah. The only know. comment I will make is that any relationship you have, super committed, super casual, anywhere in between, they all have costs and benefits. Yeah. None of them are free. None of them are free. And they all have a successful relationship of any flavor, has all the same keys. Yep. So we have more in common than we uh, is than is holding us apart. Indeed. And lady then, comments. Yeah. So you didn't have to delete your comment if you want to repost it or just if you want to drop us another comment and let me know that you're okay. Because I, I enjoyed that you listened to our little show. That was very nice of you. And when deleting a comment suggests some sort of turmoil. So we want to check on her. Yeah. And, and this we part's don't want a turmoil for you. Yeah. Yeah. This part's not a joke. I hope you're doing well. So please leave us a comment if you'd like. Or Contact me directly if you want to. There's ways to do that. So you can just email okay. me or whatever. You can just throw your, you're going to throw your phone number up on the screen, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send my address and, uh, and, an, and, an, and an Uber. Oh, great. <laughs> what a host. That's how you host, baby. That way, next, next week, you can do the episode about whatever song we pick and how you feel about me getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> right uh and some trivia of course some murder trivia yeah absolutely um i didn't i didn't know this piece of trivia until just now um i'm trying to figure out how to phrase it as a question uh but apparently billy joel did not have his first uh, billboard hit as a solo artist he had it as early as 1967 Yes. Um, walk band, the hassles. Was it walking in the rain? It was not walking in the rain. Okay. Um, because I knew that. I knew he re he did a dumb thing for the hassles. Well, not dumb. It was great that he was on it. Yeah. It hit uh, number one hundred and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and it was as a session musician, more or less, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I know more about it than I should know about it. I thought it might have been that Walking in the Rain song. So what was it? It was You Got Me Humming. You got me. <laughs> now, I never have owned any Hassles albums. I did have uh, a, the Attila tape. <laughs> that is cringeworthy. Yeah. Uh, but also interesting. Yeah, that keyboard on it. Yeah, that it exists is a funny bit of crazy. It shouldn't exist. But... It shouldn't exist. Um, how funny! I yeah, a friend of mine uh, told me about years ago. She would go to this show that her father produced because her father um, was a big Hollywood agent, and there were all these musical acts and. They, her and her girlfriend would go to flirt with the band, but they had to tolerate this jackass who played, who opened, and it was Billy Joel was the jackass. <laughs> Great. It wasn't remotely famous. And at that point, 
because this was even before Attila, there's no way he was even good because he was just learning. Right. And probably was a jackass. <laughs> and I'm sure, yeah. And it's just funny that they're they're trying to like impress whoever's they think is going to be famous. And then this Long Island idiot is up there. <laughs> and guess what? I missed then all of them. By the way, there is a comment on billyjoel.com for the lyrics. Oh, do do That's read. Jerry Lee Lewis should cover this Billy Joel song. <laughs> well, <laughs> bad news. <laughs> yeah, it's a little late. A little late. Um, the observation is legit. Yeah. This sounds like a Jerry Lee Lewis song. But, but uh, that's kind that's of funny. All you have to say. It's kind of funny because if you mean that as a joke, that's good. If you're so foolish as to think, you know, I bet I bet Jerry Lee Lewis could do a pretty good version of this. It's like you missed the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> he accidentally sounded like Jerry Lee Lewis. Eh, probably not. Yeah, it's, it was probably just a Jerry Lee Lewis song. Intentional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I think you're probably right. But I initially I was like, maybe he was just being a piano guy, but you're right. It's definitely banging around on the piano. No. He probably stood up a couple of times when he played it. Oh, for sure. Did that thing that piano players will do. Yep. He <laughs> kicked the stool across the stage. And he probably got yelled at. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's like, oh, that costs money. Yep. It was like when I hosted karaoke, I used to have to always yell at people because they always wanted to swing the microphone with the cord. Yep. I don't know what that is. Yep. But the the karaoke microphones, um, they're just plugged in very lightly. So <laughs> do that and it was across the room. That's pretty great. Or they drop the fucking mic. Drop the mic. It's not yours. The famous people who do that paid for that equipment. Yeah. And you don't look cool. Yeah, you fucking don't. Just a drunk girl with six other drunk girls. Singing a song you don't really know, it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> a half but, and I think it's great as a society that we glommed on to karaoke. It's so dumb. Yeah. Therefore fun. And yeah. nobody looks cool. And that's kind of great. I wonder, I'm hoping that I'll graduate into the guy that I used to enjoy seeing. Because I remember when I was young doing karaoke, if some old idiot showed up yep. and sang some lovely song they happened to like, and they did it well enough, I was always like, oh, that's great. Look at that old guy, I think. Yeah. I, I think a genial thing about him because I just always thought it was nice. Yeah. I Yeah, I remember that from my early days of hosting karaoke. There would always be... There was a one place we went where there was a super old guy who spent the whole night like gearing up, getting as drunk as he could, and he would sing Jet. Oh, great. Uh, and he was really bad. Like, really bad. Like, didn't even sing really so much as read. But you know, he was so happy doing it. Yep. By the end, people were like, yay! <laughs> yeah. Go home and pass out, I presume. Yeah, I think I think I could be that guy. I think I'm just about sad enough looking that people would be happy to see me. Well, wow, wear your hat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. uh, have we done leave a tender moment alone? You know what? I am going to look and see if we have done leave a tender moment alone. Check the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Let's go to my channel. <laughs> Let's go to... That'd be a better way. This is not too bad. So I'm going to Jim and... Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Stop that. Don't play. Don't play. Okay. <laughs> Copyright violation. Yeah. 
Vienna, angry young man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think that we have. I don't think we have. No, I don't think we have either. And if we have, well, what the fuck are you going to do? You probably missed that episode anyway. It's about time we recovered it. We don't remember what the fuck are the chances that you remember. Exactly. 82, leave a tender moment alone. Let me write this down. Yeah, I don't think we have. I just wanted to take a quick peek. Yeah. Because it all, Very, that's definitely one we could have done. But I know I don't think we did. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we did. Yeah, I think uh hold on a second. Let's come on. Come on. Come on, fingers. There we go. Yes, okay, I'm back. I did another screen going, I couldn't see you, so there we go. Sure, sure, sure. Easy to leave a tender moment alone. Well, that sounds lovely. Um, and I recommend anybody just go watch a Diane Keaton movie. I am gonna check that out. Absolutely.